Hello everyone, my name is Denise. This morning I'll be talking about a flight disaster. But before I do so, I'd like to explain to you some of the different ways that I hear from the Lord. And the reason I'll be doing this is because many times I hear prophets or prophetic people would come and they would say that I've heard from the Lord. And I myself would wonder, how did this person hear from the Lord? Was it through a dream, a vision? How did they hear? And so for this reason, I'll be explaining to you. Also to help anyone who may be interested in the prophetic and how it works. Okay, I hear from the Lord audibly, just as I'm speaking now and you can hear me. This is one of the ways that I hear from the Lord. I also hear through dreams and visions. There are also times when I would have a download of information where I would know everything that happened as if I was there when the events took place. Okay, those are some of the ways that I hear from the Lord. Right, as I've said this morning, I'll be talking about a flight disaster. On the 16th of December, 21, I heard in the spiritual realm that there will be a plane crash. I also had a dream where I was told in the dream that there's a prophecy that I was given that I need to release urgently for us to pray. And so I believe this is the prophecy that I was given. So let us pray, brethren, and let us not be weary. I know you may be thinking that I've been praying and all these unfavorable events have still taken place. They have still manifested, but it could be for any reason why these prophecies have been manifested. It could be that we all need to come together in one mind for God to move, for God to intervene in these prophecies. Or maybe he knows that should the prophecies not come to pass, we will believe that he has not spoken. And this could be a way of telling us, of the Lord telling us that he has spoken. There are also some prophets that the Lord has made promises to, such as not one word that you have spoken will fall to the ground. Basically, what the Lord is saying, every word that these prophets, some of these prophets have spoken will come to pass. How do I know this? Because the Lord has told me. He told me that there are some prophets that he made promises to that every word that they have spoken will come to pass. And these are just some of the reasons, the many reasons why God may still allow a prophecy to manifest. But it's still not a reason to stop us from praying about all these prophecies. For we don't know which of these prophecies the Lord will prevent from manifesting. We don't know, brethren, and so let us not go weary in praying. He could even allow things to work in the favor of only a few individuals, a few faithful individuals, rather than for, you know, many people. So the Lord could allow it to work for only a few people rather than everyone. So let us continue to pray. Many times I've spoken about how God had extended the life of Ezekiah after sending message to tell him that 
he was about to die and that he should set his house in order. For he was going to die and faithful Ezekiah cried out to the Lord and the Lord added 50 more years to his life. And so we can see that, you know, God had changed his mind. He's changed his mind of something, of a prophecy that was to manifest. Because Ezekiah cried out to the Lord, as I've said, and the Lord added 50 more years unto his life. So let us not go weary, brethren, for we do not know which prophecies the Lord will answer. And I'm sure also that Ezekiah would have seen many prophecies fulfilled, but he still believed that God may change his mind on his behalf. And so he cried out to the Lord and the Lord answered his prayer. So let us not go weary in praying. For the scripture also tells us that, you know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are we going to use? What do you think the scripture is referring to other than to pray? This is how, you know, we can pull down stronghold by praying and asking the Lord to intervene. For we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness and against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are what we are wrestling with. And so I believe that the Lord wants us to pray. As I've spoken before earlier about the dream that I had about a prophecy, we can see that it is not of God. I know God will allow some disasters to happen for us to move. But, you know, I believe that this prophecy is not of God based on what I've heard that I should do this prophecy urgently for us to pray. And so, brethren, you know, join me in prayer that we will pray against the plans of the enemy, that we will pray against the plans of the enemy because it is not the will of the Lord. Okay, these are my few words for today. But before I go, I would like to say if there's anyone who don't know Jesus as their personal savior, I want to encourage you this morning to seek the Lord today, to turn to him before it's too late for you. Tomorrow is not promised to you and you could die in your sins at any time. And so I want to encourage you to receive the Lord today to accept him as your personal savior before it's too late for you. There are also those who were once with Christ, but they've now turned away from the faith. I want to encourage you also to return to the Lord, to seek him again before it's too late for you. As I've said, tomorrow is not promised to you. You could die in your sins at any time, and so I want to encourage you to receive the Lord again, to turn to him before it's too late for you. There are also those who are still professing the faith, but they are lukewarm. The word of the Lord describes them as being lukewarm. They have one foot in and one foot out, still doing the things of this world and the things of God. I want to encourage you, to turn to the Lord, to seek him in truth before it's too late. The word of the Lord said, let your light so shine that all men will see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. And so let us live a life that is worthy and acceptable, that the name of the Lord will be glorified 
and men will come to know him. For the scripture also tells us that for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, brethren, let us continue to seek the Lord and to live for him in truth that the world will see and desire to walk in the footstep of true believers. These are my few words for today. Thank you for listening. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.